Well, Superman has his Fortress of Solitude, and Bruce Wayne, he's got the Bat Cave, and me, the Menzoid, I've got the Menzoid Man Cave, a place to sit back, chill out, talk about the issues of the day, and I'm very happy to have back in the Man Cave, the Scrawler, columnist extraordinaire for the Toronto Sun, Joe Warmington. Hi, Joe. Happy Welcome New back. Year to you, Menzoid, <laughs> happy and New the Year audience, to you. and... Uh, Really good to be back. It, it We're is talking football today. Oh, are we? Oh, well, Ford football yep. and the political football. Political football, and you know, Joe, you've been covering uh, and you've been writing some great columns about the whole. I call it the Ford fiasco. Uh, how uh, Mayor Rob Ford's enemies are going after him uh, with the use of the courts in what is really politically motivated uh, litigation. Um, you did a little yeah. research. It's more than politically motivated. Okay, tell us. Well, it's uh, it, it's a conspiring kind of thing, a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's evil. What's happening because it's against the democratic uh, system. Now, I don't take anything away from the errors and folly of Mayor Rob Ford, which I've written as well. He's brought this on himself by you know refusing to play the game. But okay. that that aside. You know, he doesn't matter in the big picture long term, and neither do the uh, people that are the co-conspirators. But what does matter is the is the public's uh, vote, and that's at risk here. And if uh, a court, as we sit here and wait, uh, decides to kick him out of office, yeah. that's that's another dark day for democracy. And, and Joe, just to flesh out the details for those who might not be familiar with the case, what we're talking about was Mayor Ford soliciting donations for his uh, football team. Um, and it was on city letterhead, and it was a, a very minute amount, just over $3,000. And for that, he may be, depending on how his appeal goes, uh, how it's judged, he might be kicked out of office. When we look at uh, the issue here, and, and I mean, you mentioned that uh, Mayor Ford is, in effect, uh, the author of his own misfortune to a certain degree. He had a couple of opportunities that he not to I guess repay the money and he well he was he was going to win the vote right the vote in question and that's the, I think would have been his better case is to make the point that you know the the vote carried the council decided to not make him pay it back everybody knows it's ridiculous yeah it's like the bear trap is there and here is the bear right here yeah and you know it's there and you step into it anyway just to show that you're you're the boss that's what he's done he's walked in and led with his chin. And there's always a lot of people ready to knock your block off when you do that. And that's all this is. Yeah. And the court should have some wisdom to understand that. The problem is that this is such an uh, uh, interesting, dark, and devious uh, deed behind the scenes that, yeah. you know, the loser is not Ford. Ford will lose his seat if it happens, lose the mayor, he can run again. Okay. The loser is the taxpayer and the voter. Oh, and, I, uh, I totally agree with that. If, if you care about that, which I know you do, mm. you know the Sun News Network does, that's more important than your position on anything else on this uh, file. This is the perversity of the matter, yeah. isn't it? I, I really think that uh, whoever runs against Rob Ford, I think Rob Ford would win again. So basically, we're going to spend millions, in the, whether it's 7 or $15 million, uh, Joe, over an issue that goes back to about $3,000 that was money being raised not for Rob Ford's fulfillment, but for uh, the Don Bosco Eagles, a football program that takes in, um, you know, disadvantaged youth in many cases, you know, gives them something to aspire to. He's done a great job with it. I've spoken to mothers who have every kids on that team. Every counselor uses their letterhead for things like this. They're always raising money and doing things. So where are those conflict of interest? Well, you know what, it's a good question, but they, you know what, uh, at the end of the day, the rule is the rule, and he spit in the face of the judge, so he has to deal with the judge, in this case, the panel of judges, hopefully, We'll look at all these things that you just mentioned and say, look, just pay back the money. That's all they have to do. Yeah. I don't care about what they say the rules are. The bigger picture of our city and our democracy, and listen, if these judges do this, they're putting a lot of politicians currently currently in office and for the future at risk. Because oh, the precedent's been set that you can throw someone out of office or something like this. And, and, uh, that's not how it should work. It should work. It should be thrown out of North office Korea, at the ballot box. North Korea, folks. Yeah, but not in Canada. Uh, exit question: Wha How do you think the judge is going to rule when he makes that uh, decision? Well, you know, a coin in the air. It's it's tough to predict something like this. Um, I I have a really bad feeling about it. Okay. I think that you know they didn't delve into the fact of what this guy Max Reed was doing in the earlier uh, sessions, and that's the same guy suing him on another case. It's just such. A death by a thousand cuts that it's just sooner or later you bleed to death and uh, 
you know, I think that they're, all they have to do is just put the final nail in. That's what I think is going to happen. I hope not, because if it happens, democracy is dying with it. I agree with you. And even people on the left have said that. Well, this everybody was the who knows about do. democracy knows yeah, that. Absolutely. Joe, a pleasure as always. And folks, keep it tuned here to Menzoy Mornings. More Menzoy Mornings coming up right after this. <laughs>